So we do have a song for you. I'd like to ask um, my song people, Sandy and Madeline, to come out. And we're going to sing a song that has moons in it.
Lost Lake are so magical. And I know a lot of people who love going to Lost Lake because of the winds. And people who have been going there for years and years and enjoying the winds every year. And um, I'm very excited that tonight we get to focus on loons and learn about them, but not just generally how they survive, but our loons and the stories of the loons that live in our area. We're very fortunate that we have two people who have dedicated countless, and I mean countless hours, over many, many years to keep track of how our loons are doing. And Dan and Ginger Polshuk have been going out since the 90s doing an annual survey, going out to every lake where loons are nesting and seeing what's happening. Have there been chicks hatched? If so, coming back, did they survive? And counting them, working to make sure that the chicks are banded so that we can track where they go and what happens to them when they go there. And so that kind of tremendous effort you just don't normally see. It's very unique. And it means that we're privileged that we get to come here tonight and learn specific stories about our loons in our, in our region. And it also means that we've had advocates working um, on behalf of our loons for quite a lot of years. And I know there are people here tonight who have also helped with that. And um, it's making a difference. And so that's also really encouraging. So um, without further ado, I would like to introduce Dan and Ginger Polshuk. Thank you very much, Julie. Now can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, very good. Ginger and I are absolutely delighted to be here tonight. Ginger's back here getting some images. Uh, she wants to record this for posterity or for something. Uh, I'm told we were here in 2011. That's seven years ago. And uh, in that span of time, you probably don't even recognize it anymore. But we're absolutely delighted to be here again tonight and uh, to be able to present in front of this very fine audience. And uh, thank you for the wonderful food that we had earlier. Uh, it was great. And enjoy it. So our presentation tonight is uh, local loon tales. And really, Ginger and I are supposed to be in California. However, when Julie calls and says, I need a show, we come back to Washington. <laughs> you know, we could have a nice balmy 70 degree evening tonight. <laughs> uh, it was great here today, though, also. But we're delighted to be here. And for Julie, you know, we'll go around the world. She's, she's such a wonderful and fascinating leader. And uh, I told Ginger when uh, we started working on this, there's just no end to what she can do. And uh, I really believe that. And uh, Madeline is here with us also tonight. So the name of our show is uh, Local Loon Tales, as you can see. This is what our presentation will look like tonight. We're going to do acknowledgments first. We've had so many people over the years help us out that we are truly indebted to. Uh, as far as the work that Ginger and I have done, we couldn't have been able to have all of the observations, we could have been able to record all of the data, and we wouldn't have nearly as complete a story to tell without the help of our very fabulous Loon Rangers. We have a lot of them. Uh, as we look down this presentation, you'll see that we'll do the acknowledgments first, and we'll talk about for those people that have truly made a difference in the work that we have done. We'll look at some maps, we'll talk about the chronology of the loons in the area, We'll check out their productivity. We'll uh, talk about their conservation efforts that have been applied to the loons in this locale. We'll sadly talk about mortalities. And uh, then we'll get into the local loon tale. And that will be really what our stories will be about tonight. It will be about lakes and loons in this, in this region. So it will be of great interest to you. Then we'll talk about what you can do. And then finally, we'll see a showcase of common loon images. So this is a list of people that have helped us out over the years. And those that are highlighted in red are people from this area. And I know a number of you are here tonight. And I'll take a look at this. Madeline, of course, is here. She's going to have a presentation for us here before too long. Uh, how about Patty Baumgart? There she is. Hello, Patty. Thank you so much. Uh, Patty assisted us back in the, the golden era um, of when we were 
starting to do our limited research up until about 2012, I believe, was the last time we spent time in the field together at Bonaparte Lake. And uh, the very following day, I, I got on a jet plane and started to work for three years in Denver following that. So that was the day after Bonaparte Lake. So I'm glad you're here, Patty. Thanks for all your work over the years. Uh, how about Michael Borsevich for the Forest Service is not here. Uh, the this tells, uh, next on the list is Dan and Roberta Furlong. They're seated in the front up here. Raise your hands, please. Uh, Dan and Berta have uh, become dear friends of ours. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> they have helped us countless times. Whenever we get into a jam in the Bonaparte Lake or Lost Lake area, we come into their yard and say, you guys have got to help us out. And they always do. Uh, they drop what they're doing and give us assistance. So that started, I'm guessing, what, around 2000, wouldn't you say, somewhere back then? And we've gotten so old in 18 years, it's just incredible. But we've had countless wonderful meals at their place and just have enjoyed their friendship so much. So thank you very much for that. We'll talk about more of what they have done as we get on into the show. Uh, next is Jeff Henlon. Jeff is here, I know for sure. Uh, thank you for all of your work, Jeff. <laughs> Next is Carl and Pat Lane. There, Carl's here and Pat's there. Raise your hands, please. <laughs> they are from Penticton, Canada. I guess that would be in BC. <laughs> and they, they have helped us out over the years also with observations on loon, specifically in the Lost Lake area. Uh, they went out in their uh, kayaks and did some observations for us on a loon that was in trouble up there at Lost Lake. Took some images for us that helped us out a great deal. And so thank you for that, Paul. Uh, Chris Loggers is not here. Lee Johnson is here. Lee, where are you seated? <laughs> Lee has uh, given us a tremendous amount of data over the years. He'll send us an email and say, I've seen seven loons on this lake. What do you know about that? And we say, we're happy for that, we record it. And it's people like Lee Johnson that make a real difference for us. Obviously, we are two people. We're dealing with about 20 different lakes in this region where loons reside. We can't be everywhere at all times. And so the assistance of people is greatly appreciated. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Phil and Dev Lee, are you here, perhaps? Um, Chris Lawyers, Matt Marsh. Let's see. How about Don and Lori Rounds from Lost Lake? They're not here tonight. Ellen Sue is not here. She's from um, Crawfish Lake area. Uh, Don and Lynn Peterson. I know they're here because I just added their names to this list. So Don and Lynn, there they are. They're also from the Crawfish Lake area, and they helped us out by freezing the loon that was killed by a bald eagle on Crawfish Lake this year. The first time that we've ever recorded in our research that a bald eagle took an adult common loon. So they uh, froze the cadaver for us. We sent that back to Biodiversity Research Institute to have an necropsy done on that. And they, they put it in their refrigerator, uh, not quite, in their deep freeze outside. So, come Thanksgiving time? No. <laughs> so, uh, and then Julie Vanderwall is on her list. Thank you, Judy, for all of the years of fun and for all of the years. Of fun. The organizations that I'd like to pay tribute to tonight, the Okanagan Highlands Alliance, of course, as you see there in red, Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, and the United States Forest Service. We've always had a great working relationship with these organizations. And uh, Ginger, I, I don't think there was a single time when we got crossed with them or they with us. Uh, we've always admired the work that they do, the work that they have to do, and I guess it's been kind of a, a mutual feeling back and forth. And uh, we are so appreciative of what the organizations that I've got listed here those three and all the many others that you see here. These are organizations that have helped us out over the years. 
42 different organizations and 148 different individuals. Yeah. And our list is still growing. So yeah. thank everybody for that.